Hello and welcome. I'm Saeed from StoryPlanet.net. Dive right into the essence of the most captivating books without reading them cover to cover. Whether you're on the go, at the gym, or just relaxing at home, we offer you a unique and enriching listening experience. Today, we are exploring the book, Will It Fly? A Creation by Pat Flynn. Will It Fly? 2016 is a comprehensive guide that will help you test your business ideas and navigate towards a successful outcome. The key takeaways from this book will enable you to thoroughly evaluate the feasibility of your concepts, conduct market research, and establish a deep understanding of your target audience. Before we delve into these revelations, it's interesting to note that Pat Flynn transitioned from a 9-to-5 job to become a prosperous entrepreneur in his professional journey. Currently, he offers guidance to individuals on how to establish their own prosperous and morally sound online businesses via his website and podcast, smartpassiveincome.com. With eight key ideas to unveil, brace yourself for a deep dive into this captivating book on storyplained.net. To start, this text encourages individuals to prepare their entrepreneurial idea for success. It emphasizes the question of what's in it for me, implying personal benefits and motivations. The focus is on getting the idea ready for action and launching it. The text is about starting a successful business. It emphasizes the importance of aligning personal goals with the business idea, making plans financially viable, and identifying strengths. It also suggests that it is important to understand the language of customers and not to pursue ideas that are not directly related to one's expertise or resources. Key idea number one. To be a successful entrepreneur, it is important to create a business that aligns with your lifestyle goals. Before starting a business, it is important for young entrepreneurs to investigate how their idea aligns with their values and goals to ensure satisfaction. Conducting a self-examination, such as interviewing their future self, can help in deciding what type of business suits them best. This can be done by dividing a piece of paper into four sections, representing the most important aspects of their life, and imagining themselves five years down the road. This exercise helps in identifying any adjustments that need to be made to their business idea to ensure it meets their desired lifestyle. Key idea number two, successful entrepreneurs are able to identify their advantages by examining their past experiences and successes. Identify your unique skills and characteristics to gain a competitive edge. This is your unfair advantage or superpower. Use this advantage as the foundation for new ideas Look at your past experiences to uncover interesting patterns about yourself. Determine what aspects you enjoyed and what strengths were important to you. For example, if influencing outcomes is important to you, becoming an entrepreneur would align with your strengths. Key idea number three. The text advises to create a visual representation of your idea and then extract its core essence. To develop a business idea, begin by organizing your thoughts in a mind map. Use post-its or a web-based tool to visually structure your ideas. Distill your idea into a single sentence that captures its essence. Then, organize your mind map into categories and write 400-500 words covering each category. Edit this draft down to a 3-5 to five sentence paragraph that is easy to understand for potential customers or investors. Finally, refine your idea into a single sentence that accurately describes your business. Key idea number four. The text suggests three key points for success. Sharing your ideas, seeking feedback, and conducting market research. These actions are essential in ensuring the development and viability of any idea or business venture. Before launching your business, it's important to research how the world will respond to your idea. Seek feedback from potential clients and industry experts. In one example, the author realized the need to reshape their idea after speaking with food truck owners and realizing their lack of direct experience. Create a market map to understand how your market operates and identify opportunities for differentiation. In the case of an online yoga school, the market map would include places like yoga studios and existing online schools, as well as people to contact and the different styles of yoga to offer. Key idea number five. 
it is important to understand the problems your audience is facing and how they talk about them. Conducting research is important for understanding your market, but it's also crucial to care for your clients. Develop a customer profile using the customer PLAN model, which stands for problems, language, anecdotes, and needs. Start by identifying your customers' problems by reaching out to them and asking open-ended questions. Then, focus on understanding their language and how they describe their struggles and goals. Key idea number six. To strengthen your idea, it is important to collect customer anecdotes and listen to their needs. To stay connected with your audience, encourage them to share anecdotes that can help tailor your idea to their experience. An example is a story of a beginner fisherman who struggled with casting while fly fishing but improved with the help of an experienced fisher. Listening to such stories can inform the design of a product that solves customer issues. Needs are aspects of a customer's life that don't work, and it is your job to offer solutions. For example, in researching fly fishing, the author found needs for improved fly tying techniques and simplified access to flies. Identifying these needs allows for the development of ideas to fulfill them. Key idea number seven. Successful entrepreneurs understand the importance of testing the commitment of their potential customers and investors. To validate your business idea financially, you can use various methods such as online advertising platforms, writing guest blog posts, and using hyper-targeting techniques. These strategies involve testing the interest and commitment of potential investors and customers by gathering real statistics and feedback. By utilizing these methods, you can gauge the initial interest in your idea and determine the potential market size for your product or service. Key idea number eight, the final validation of a product or idea, occurs when potential customers interact with it and are willing to invest in it. Measuring commitment to your idea is important as people may initially show interest but not actually buy the product. To validate your idea, have one-on-one -on -one interactions with potential customers and share your solution with them. Show interest in the customer, focus the conversation on your product and ask for feedback. The final validation comes from asking for pre-orders and aiming for at least 10% positive responses. If you don't get the desired response, ask for more feedback and continue improving your idea. In conclusion, the key message of this book is that while many people have good ideas, few of them are turned into successful businesses. Market research, understanding clients' problems, and rigorously validating ideas financially are essential for success. The actionable advice is to reach out to friends and colleagues to identify personal advantages and align them with core life values for the business. The suggested further reading is a book called Sprint, which provides a five-day plan to test new ideas and solve business problems. Thank you for listening to this summary. If you enjoyed this exploration, we invite you to discover other fascinating books on storyplanet.net. Don't wait any longer. A multitude of books, stories and knowledge await you there. See you soon on storyplanet.net.